the murderous actions of the cops in the USA, murdering George Floyd, the latest in a series of black people murdered at the hands of US cops, has provoked an international debate about the nature of police forces. Often you'll find when you post something about a cop, people will deploy the old bad apple theory. Ah oh, no, you can't say all the police are bad, it's just a few bad apples. But year after year after year, case after case after case, in country after country, there are cases of police brutality, police murder, police corruption. Now obviously the US police force is at the leading edge of brutality because of that country's history of slavery and racism. But all police forces, including the Garda Shiakana, are guard dogs of the rich. Their job isn't to protect and serve you and me. Their job is to protect the property of the 1% and to serve the interests of the rich. In the USA, for example, cops in the southern states have their origins in vigilante slave patrols who had the right to kick down doors and go into houses looking for runaway slaves. They employed brutal violence upon slaves who would run away. Decades later, sticking a uniform on them didn't change a thing. In the 19th century, the cities in the north faced a growing working class, protest by what they called the dangerous poor. By the mid 1800s, there was famines right across Europe and immigrants were pouring into the United States from loads of different countries. The US ruling class needed a force that could keep those people down. After the Civil War, when the North took over the South, a battle between a slave-owning Southern economy and the industrial North, the South adopted rotten anti-black laws called the Black Codes. These were abolished with the 14th Amendment to the US Constitution. But then those states just adopted segregationist Jim Crow laws. And even some northern states adopted segregationist laws. It took decades of protests to remove the Jim Crow laws. And even then, most states in the United States practiced economic segregation. And so if the police are about maintaining the status quo, and the status quo in the United States is inherently about keeping poor people and black people down, then isn't that inherently a corrupt and corrupting job? In England, the formation of police forces was similar to the USA. It was about controlling crowds of people. It's no coincidence that police forces were invented in, in the USA and in England between 1825 and 1855 when the new working class being herded into factories was starting to strike, protest and revolt. So police forces weren't formed in response to growing crime. Their formation had no correlation with a growth in crime. Their formations always had a correlation with a growth in the strength of protest movements by working class people or the oppressed. Police forces in the USA were formed in the face of massive strikes, the same in England. Strikes began in the 1820s and 30s and culminated in the Chartist movement of the 1840s which was demanding a vote for working class people. There were riots in northern US cities in the 1800s, riots that they needed a force to put down. There was the threat of slave insurrection after the Civil War and also the police had to play a role in keeping poor white workers and black workers apart. So in the 1800s, the Industrial Revolution led to a massive change. In an old town of the Middle Ages, you might have a protest of 100 or 200 people, and usually the response of the king was to round up and hang the ringleaders. There was no police forces back then. A sheriff would round up a posse to go looking for someone, like in the old stories of Robin Hood, where outlaws were hunted down. When you're dealing with protests of 50, 60, 70, 80,000 workers who have the potential to protest and strike, then things become very different. If you hang the ringleaders, you might just provoke a strike wave, which is very damaging to your profits if you own the factories. Or you could spark something worse. You could spark a working class revolution, which wouldn't be an action of a minority, but would be an action involving tens of thousands of people. So they needed a force that could batten a crowd into submission without pushing things too far that could round up the ringleaders, that could patrol working class areas and be an ear in those areas for seditious activities. The police force here in Ireland was set up by Robert Peel. That's why they were called the Peelers. There was two police forces. 
The RIC was the force that was deployed across the country. And unlike most police forces, they were armed with rifles. Because from the beginning, that police force was about keeping an occupied population down. The British Empire wanted to keep us down. The Dublin Metropolitan Police was a police force modelled more on the British model. Their actions in 1913 during the Great Lockout showed how they responded to working class militancy. After the War of Independence and Ireland's Civil War, the new Free State Government set about forming a police force. They adopted many of the old British laws. For example, the ancient British Treason Acts were kept on the statute books. They passed emergency legislation to give the new state the power to put down Republicans and anti-capitalists. 77 people were shot without trial and they set about forming what they called the Civic Guard, a new police force. The Dublin Metropolitan Police, the people who had batten the Dublin lockout, were taken into the Gardaí without change. They just changed their uniforms. They were still the same people. The RIC were replaced across the country, but the new regime made sure it appointed the most conservative elements of the Irish Revolution. People like Kevin O'Higgins, an upper middle class law student who saw the general strikes and rebellions and militancy of the War of Independence as something that needed to come to an end. He wanted to ally himself with the Irish rich, the Anglo-Irish elite and the bishops to put workers back in their box. And emerging from the Civil War, the Irish state had sinister means of beating Republicans, of beating up activists, of general surveillance. But if a state adopts sinister powers to use against one section of the population, it can use them against all. It's no coincidence that as soon as a movement like the water charges emerges, that they set up something like Operation Midson, which was an operation of the Gardaí to spy on leading water charges activists to try and undermine the movement. So in the USA, over in England, or here in Ireland, police forces were formed to keep crowds of people, to keep the population, to keep the working majority and oppressed people in the case of the USA, to keep them down. These new police forces had a mass function. That was to attack strikes and protests with batons. But they also had an individual function. And that was to get friendly in working class areas, to be an ear for militants, to listen out for seditious behavior. So the idea that the police were set up to stop crime is nonsense. And people know this from their own personal experience. My grandmother was mugged on our way back from bingo one night. She was living in Fatima Mansion's flats. Her head was beaten against the railings. We called the police. We never had any illusions living in the flats that they'd actually come and help. They turned up two days later to take a statement. And that's the reality of it. The police turn up when the fight in the chipper is already over. Human beings are justification machines. We try and rationalise everything we do. And so if you beat up workers on a picket line, or you take a 12-year-old boy who's never been to Nigeria, whose parents happen to come from there, and you deport him in his school uniform, how do you justify that to yourself if that's what you do day in, day out, day in, day out? Will you develop right-wing attitudes? In Greece, over the course of the 32 general strikes against austerity, the police in Greece were 50% of them voting for the Nazis in Golden Dawn. That's why US cops are found to have thousands of connections to right-wing social media groups. And people might say, oh, but the Guardian aren't that bad. Thinking of the local beat cop who walks around their area and smiles while collecting information on what's going on in the area. Will you ask the family of Terence Wheelock? if the Irish Guards are a nice bunch. He's a 20-year-old youth from inner city Dublin who was arrested on the 2nd of June 2005 and a short time later was found dead in a cell in Star Street Guard Station. The guards claimed he committed suicide. It's funny that he committed suicide when he was arrested under suspicion that he might have had something to do with stealing a car. And instead of leaving the cell for investigators, the cell was refurbished and repainted. Terence Wheelock was murdered by the cops because they've no respect for inner city communities. Just like they didn't give a damn when my granny was mugged. And look at Garda responses to protests. The student demo of 2010, where they knocked the girl unconscious and beat people to a pulp. 
to reclaim the streets protest. Back in the 90s, where the police went wild, they gave people savage beatings on the streets. The Shell to Sea protests, where there was regular police brutality directed at a community that were fighting for their rights. Example after example after example. Or corruption. How about the Donegal police that tried to frame the McBrearty family for murder that they didn't commit? Or who planted explosives and tried to blame it on activists? Or who planted guns in a traveller halting site and tried to blame the travellers? Don't think the Irish police are as racist as the American police? Go ask the travelling community and they'll tell you the truth about it. Or look at the smear in Morris McCabe. He points out that the Gardaí are corrupt and next thing you know someone copies and pastes an accusation of child sex abuse onto his file in Tusla, the Child Protection Agency. But are there alternatives to the police? Well, first of all, as long as this system exists, a system where 1% of the people control almost all the wealth, as long as that system exists, they're going to have guard dogs. And so they're not going to let us get rid of the police or build serious democratic alternatives. So what kind of alternatives would you put in place? Well, first of all, Make drugs a health issue. Completely undermine the gangs. Just make drugs legal. Like they did in Portugal. You'd undermine muggings like the mugging of my grandmother. That'd be gone. Because addicts wouldn't have to feed their habit with robbing handbags or burgling houses. Two, have funding to schemes like CE schemes and employ loads of community workers. People who are known in the community, who the local kids know, who the local kids trust because it's someone who grew up in the community. And pay those people to go around the community, chatting to the kids on the street corners, talking to them about opportunities, giving them a bit of hope and a bit of confidence in themselves. And for extreme crimes like murder, why do you need a repressive gang of men with batons to go solve a murder? We could still employ the forensic scientists and investigators, the people with the skills to go track down a murder. In the early stages of a revolution, the rich would probably try to sabotage the revolution. They'd probably try to smuggle their wealth out of the country. So you'd probably need some kind of force to go arrest them. But it would be democratically accountable. It would have to report to an assembly of the people. There would be nothing like the police force that we have right now. The police force as we know is only necessary because we live under capitalism. And as long as we live under capitalism, they will want a body of armed men to defend them. So make no bones about it, the police are not part of the working class. They are enemies of the working class and will always be enemies of the working class.